In this video, I'll introduce the primary outside resources used by investment professionals. In class, we'll discuss brokerages and trading on the secondary market. Finally, in class, I'll introduce you to indexes and how to calculate both the return and the value of an index. When we're determining whether to invest in a security, we want to have as much information as possible. We break that information into three groupings, economic or macro level information, industry level information, and firm level information. The first, macro level information, refers to statistics like the expected GDP growth rate or investor sentiment, which we talked about in the last class, or perhaps the purchasing managers index or PMI, which is a measure of expected economic trends in manufacturing based on a survey of purchasing managers. Industry level information relates to industry outlook, which comes from a variety of resources. Um, usually these resources are going to be industry specific. Finally, we also want firm level information. That includes the risks the firm faces, the characteristics of the firm, and the corporate governance of the firm. Now let's talk about the sources of this information. We'll start with macro level information. You can get information about current and expected future economic conditions from economic letters posted by many large cap banks like Bank of America or Goldman Sachs. For example, here's Goldman Sachs's US Economic Outlook 2020. It's a summary of their expectations or the bank's expectations concerning future economic growth. This is publicly available and I've posted this document on our Canvas site for today. Another good source for macroeconomic information comes from wire services. These are services that provide a stream of news stories as soon as they become available. The news function on the Bloomberg terminal is a good example of this. If you type news into the function bar, the blue bar, you'll be able to see news on recent world activity as soon as the stories are published. The wire is updated by the second. Another resource you have available is the economic report of the president, which gives a background on current and expected conditions in the United States. So I have here the most recent economic report of the president, the 2019 version. This thing is usually put out in March of each year, and it contains information on just about every area of the economy. So, for example... Uh, we'll have information about the financial services sector, we'll have information about the real estate sector, uh, we'll have information about fiscal activities, labor force activities, etc. I've also put this document on our Canvas site for today. Finally, the Beige Book put out by the Federal Reserve reports economic conditions in the U.S. eight times a year. I have that in a link right here. Now the Beige Book the most recent version of which is January 15th, 2020. It describes economic conditions overall in the United States initially. So for example, we have the overall economic activity of the U.S. economy initially in this document. And then if we want to, we can look at economic conditions in each of the Fed regions, the 12 Fed regions. So for example, if I want to look at what happened in the Fed region of Philadelphia, or the region governed by the Philadelphia Federal Reserve Branch, I can do that. I can look at their total economic activity, employment and wages, prices, manufacturing, consumer spending, financial services, etc. On the industry level, there are often trade publications available. For example, Computer World is a publication dedicated to IT news and expected changes in the tech industry. Other publications or websites like Red Herring also provide information about business activity, utilities, banking, etc. On the firm level, the best and most complete information you can get comes from the Edgar database, which is the SEC's data repository. So let's take a look at the Edgar database. So here it is. I've just clicked the link that I had in our PowerPoint slide, and it takes us directly to the SEC's website. Now, if I want to look up information on a particular company, let's say I want to download one of their reports, all I need to do is click this link, type in the security I want to look at, let's say Apple, and I'm given all of the reports, all of the information that the Edgar database has made public, publicly available regarding Apple. So for example, we have their proxy statements. So this is going to be the report where Apple details the individuals who are up for election as directors in the annual shareholder meeting. We can also look at their annual report. 
which is the 10K. And we can look at it here, or we can also usually download it. So here is every piece of information that might be considered value relevant for Apple over the past year. We have information on their business, what they do, their risk factors, uh, the financial statements are going to be in here, and a management discussion and analysis section, which describes the management's summary of current and expected firm outcomes. Usually this is going to be vetted by a large number of lawyers. Now, there are also many other periodicals you can use to gather information about firms. The Economist and Forbes are good resources for macro conditions, while newspapers like the Financial Times and Wall Street Journal are good daily publications that focus on the financial sector and business conditions around the world. You can now read the Wall Street Journal for free at Starbucks, which is often where I go to look at the Wall Street Journal. I personally have a subscription to the Financial Times, the reason being that it seems to me it gives a lot better information on international business conditions than the Wall Street Journal does. The Wall Street Journal is really more focused on the U.S. economy, whereas the Financial Times is actually a British publication. There are also subscription sources that you can use to collect data. For example, Merchant offers a subscription that currently allows investors to view the backgrounds of over 200,000 executives from around the world. And it also allows you to collect information on more firms than supposedly any other service available. You can also use the Bloomberg terminal to collect data. As I've mentioned in class, Bloomberg is the most complete data resource for investors. It contains most of the data that these other resources collect, and it allows you to easily download that data. There are competitors to Bloomberg, like Thomson Reuters Icon. Icon is cheaper than Bloomberg, which runs about, oh, $21,000 a terminal. The drawback is that the last time I looked, once you add up all the additional features to Icon that make it comparable to Bloomberg, these add-on features that have some additional price tag, the price ends up being pretty similar to that of one Bloomberg terminal. The last good sources of information I'll discuss in this video are financial portals. Financial portals are one-stop shops for a lot of information about securities across a variety of asset classes. For example, if you want information on stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, you can find that on Morningstar. The base version of Morningstar is free, but it does have a popular subscription service. So for example, if I want to type in the ticker symbol for the S&P 500 ETF, SPY, we can take a look at the data that Bloomberg has on that particular ETF. So we have information on the current price per share of that ETF, its net asset value, uh, information on trading behavior by investors. We have information on the fund itself and analyst, inf uh, analyst recommendations. We can look at the ETF's performance through time. So obviously it has offered a fairly positive return historically. We can also take a look at the risk associated with this ETF. So what we see are a couple primary measures of risk like the beta or the standard deviation of the ETF. We'll talk about those in a couple of days, but suffice it to say we have a huge amount of information on Morningstar. We can even look at the portfolio of funds that are listed in Morningstar. So this ETF, the S&P 500 ETF, we can see its breakdown across the 11 sectors of the economy. So the, these are the percentages, the percentage weights of this ETF, this exchange traded fund in each of these sectors. Now the next financial portal that I'll show you is something called Finviz. And Finviz is it does a lot of things It gives you information about really a lot of different stocks, a lot of different other asset classes like futures, foreign exchange, cryptocurrencies, etc. But one of the best features with Finviz is its stock screener. A stock screener is just a tool that you can use to identify all stocks that exhibit a similar characteristic or characteristics. So for example, I'm on Finviz's stock screener and if I want to look up all the stocks that are trading on the NASDAQ. I just select NASDAQ and let's say I want only mega cap stocks. So the very largest stocks or stocks of the biggest companies on the NASDAQ. Here we have nine different companies. So if I want to increase my selectivity here, let's say I want to find only stocks that 
are highly recommended or strong buys. Well, right now, there are no mega stocks on the NASDAQ that are recommended by analysts as strong buys. But there are several stocks, actually eight of those nine stocks, that are recommended as buys. All right, now the final financial portal I'll show you is Yahoo Finance. All right, so we're on the primary page of Yahoo Finance, and Yahoo Finance is primarily for stocks. So let's say I want to look up Apple. I can just type in the company name or the ticker symbol, which is AAPL, and I can get a host of information about Apple. So its current share price of 318, its return over the last trading day, its market capitalization, so the total market value of each share times the number of shares outstanding is about $1.4 trillion. Uh, the date that it's going to report its earnings next, January 28th, and we can usually get some information about the company itself or some additional ratios. So the price to sales ratio, price to book ratio, a huge amount of other information. Now, finally, we can go over to the analysis tab. Now, what this page tells us is that 34 analysts are following the stock and they are recommending that the, or the average earnings per share that they are recommending that will be reported for the last quarter is $4.54 a, cha a share. Uh, analysts also believe that the firm will likely have had $88.4 billion in sales revenue in the, the past quarter. And we also have some other information about uh, earnings per share revisions. So maybe some analysts have changed their, their recommendations or their uh, Here's a percentage breakdown of analyst changes in recommendations, etc. cetera. Uh, suffice it to say, we do have some decent information concerning analyst behavior on Yahoo Finance. All the resources I mentioned are used by analysts to put together what are called analyst reports, or sometimes they're called research reports. These are reports that provide investors with value-relevant information about a security and allow an analyst to provide a target price, which represents the price the stock should be worth one year from today. The report will also detail much of what I just discussed in terms of the statistics and the if we're talking about an ETF, we might have a breakdown of the portfolio. Now, any client of a broker can get access to these reports. I'll show you some of these reports throughout class as we start talking about individual stocks. If you do have any questions about analyst reports or the data resources I just showed you, please don't hesitate to ask me in class or via email. So with that, I'll wrap up and I look forward to seeing you in class. Thanks.